Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. Today's video is gonna be on body typing and your diet. This is a way you can look at your body, your structure, and also how you accumulate body fat, and we can kind of use that as a way to adjust or tweak your diet and or exercise routine. This is called somatotyping. So again, it's very general. People can be a combination of our three different body types here. I'll put it on screen in a big overlay image so it's a little bit more clear for a bit so you can see it. If not, maximize your screen so you can zoom in. But this will give you a little bit more interesting info about your body and your types. So it's been a while since my last video, so I'm ready to dive in here. So we have our three major body types. We have our ectomorph, and I'll point to it over here. This is your taller, your skinnier type of person, right? They're gonna have narrower clavicle bones. They're gonna have a narrower bone structure, typically smaller wrist. This is like almost gonna be your typical like runway model type for a female, very tall, hard to gain weight also hard to put on muscle. With your guys, this is gonna be the guy that's six foot plus and right around 150. Hard gainer, hard to put on muscle. With this type of body type, a couple of things happen. It's really easy to have a crappy diet and not gain weight because you just can eat whatever you want because your metabolism is relatively high, you don't put on much muscle and you don't put on much fat. So you can get lulled into eating a crappy diet because you don't see it affect how you look and how you gain weight. So you can get lulled into a really bad sense of eating and it's really destroying your body internally with inflammation, poor bones, low vitamins, low nutrient levels. So you gotta be careful. If you're the ectomorph, crap in still equals crap out. Whether or not it shows itself on your waist or your hips or your face, it's still gonna show itself with just poor cells, poor nutrients, poor bone structure, poor hormones, and probably fatigue and other symptoms down the road, including digestive issues, mood issues, and energy problems. Next, we have the mesomorph. This is kind of the in-between. So think of the meso as the middle, right? It's kind of a combination of the ectomorph and a combination of the endomorph, okay? The endomorph's the bigger, easier to gain weight. The ectomorph's the skinnier. So think of like, the meso is kind of the middle. It's like the hybrid in the middle. We'll have the overlay on screen here too. So this person here, they're gonna have a wider shoulder structure, narrower waist, so kind of picture the upside down triangle effect here happening, right? Wider shoulders, a little bit narrower of a waist, and they're gonna have, again, pretty good glute structure, so you'll see a little bit more on the hips and glutes for men, you'll see a leaner man in the, in the waist, but bigger glutes. Same with females, more of that hourglass figure with the, the meso. And you're gonna see a person that's easier to gain muscle. They can still gain weight pretty easily, but they can also put on muscle pretty easily as well. You'll see a little bit broader in the shoulder, right? This upside down triangle. And these are gonna be like your, your prime athlete types. These are gonna be the people that accelerate more in sports because of muscle. This is your typical NFL uh, linebacker, so to speak. That's gonna be a mesomorph. People that do well in sports for the most part because of the muscle mass. And again, obviously your ectomorph will be like your basketball player, your volleyball player, people in that type of atmosphere. And then we have the endomorph. So the endomorph, is gonna be similar to the ectomorph regarding like the structure, right? The, the, the straight up and down structure. With the endomorph, we're just gonna have a wider waist. We're gonna have a wider waist, still gonna be blockier, and we're also gonna have bigger glutes as well. So big glutes, but also a wider waist. This is similar with the ectomorph, it's just narrower, right? We don't really have, um, we may have a little bit of the hourglass in the female, but we're gonna have a wider tummy and a pretty wide um, glute at the end as well. So you can see it's still pretty blocky up here. You're not quite gonna have as much hourglass uh, with the women, but you still may, you still may, because you may have a more pronounced glute area so that the hips may come in a bit. But the endomorphs are gonna be typically more overweight. This is gonna be your, your power lifter. This is gonna be your NFL lineman, so to speak. These are exaggerated examples I'm giving, but it just gives you an idea. Easier to gain, Weight, much easier to gain weight. Typically, your hip to waist ratio will be closer to one to one. So if your waist is 40 or 42, then your hips will probably be 40 to 42 as well. Where with the meso, you may have a waist around, like myself, I'm more of a meso, around 34, and my glutes are right around 41, 42. So 
you get that little bit more pronounced. Where with the ecto, you may have a waist around for a female, 26, 28, and you may have hips around 32. So you keep that ratio isn't quite gonna be as exaggerated with the ecto uh, like you see with the meso. And with the endo, you're gonna still have similar ratios, except you're gonna just be dealing with a smaller rail type of ratio here with the ecto and much bigger with the, the, the endo over here. So that kind of gives you a pretty good idea what the body types are. Now let's talk about these are my carbohydrate and protein and fat dials. These are my macronutrient dials. And we can adjust these dials according to our body type. These are our macronutrient dials. And this is important because this gives us a window into how we can adjust our macronutrients to help address our body type. So number one, with ectomorphs, we tend to be able to handle more carbohydrate. So we always want to choose the right kinds of carbohydrate. We want to be choosing anti-inflammatory, nutrient-dense, low toxins, and we want to be doing safe starches ideally, meaning trying to do starches that are grain-free, ideally because of the inflammatory nature and the amount of people out there that have leaky gut and autoimmune conditions, it's better to do the grain-free based starch. So if we look at this dial over here, this is our dial for carbohydrate, we may go higher on the carbohydrate. We may go, and this is our range, right? 60% is the conventional food pyramid. 10% is kind of if we're going ketogenic, right? We're trying to burn more fat, we'll cut the carbs more. So with our ranges here, we may go somewhere between 40 and 60, 40 and 60 grams of carbohydrate, 40 to 60 if we're an ectomorph. We may adjust that carbohydrate up just a bit. We also want to get good, clean protein. Now, with ectomorphs, they tend to be more catabolic. So that means they break down protein very, very easily because of their bone structure, because of their metabolic structure, high metabolism. So we want to make sure we're getting enough protein at each meal, at least four to six ounces of protein at each meal. So about a palm to a fist to a full hand is about four to eight, four to six. Gives you a good idea. Definitely want to be having a good post-workout protein shake. And we want to keep the workouts not too long. These people will tend to engage in long, slow cardio because of their body frame and their waist structure. Right? Women that have a very uh, wide whips, uh, wide hips, then what happens is that creates more of a valgus angle at their knees and can put more knee strain on women especially with the hips. So they will tend to engage or avoid the long, slow cardio because it causes joint pain and knee pain. So the people that are ectomorphs, the women who are ectomorphs will tend to engage in a lot of cardio because that hip to waist ratio is so, it's so even, there's less knee strain. So we gotta be careful with the long, slow distance cardio because that will create more of a catabolic effect and shred the muscle even more, not so good. So putting good uh, weightlifting, resistance training, as well as burst training in there will be helpful. Good clean post-workout meal or shake and make sure we're getting enough protein at each meal. This kind of person can up the carbohydrate more. 40 to 60 is a pretty good place to be. With the protein, they can keep it at 20 to 25% is a pretty good place to be. And then the fat, obviously we can have good, high quality, clean fats. Um, again, this person, because they have the carbs up higher, their fats will probably be a little bit lower, I would say in the 30 to 40% range. We gotta make sure that we have enough hormonal building blocks because fat is going to have good precursors for your cell membranes. It's gonna keep you full and satiated and give you the extra calories. These people over here are gonna burn through calories at a higher rate and fat is gonna be your most densest source of calories. One gram is about eight to nine calories. So really important that we get enough fat, we get enough protein to put on the muscle mass, and then we get enough carbohydrate because we're burning through sugar so fast. These, these kind of people here are gonna need a little bit of extra carbs because they aren't as carbohydrate sensitive. They can handle more carbohydrate. Now let's go to the mesomorph. We look at the mesomorph, they're kinda in between. And again, carbohydrate, I always dose upon activity level and body type. We can use some objective markers with lab work like a functional glucose tolerance. We can take our, our blood fasting. We can eat a meal one, two, and three hours, take a blood sample at each interval and see how our blood sugar fluctuates. 
Ideally, we want our blood sugar never to go above 140 within an hour after our meal, and we want it to get back below 100 within three hours. That's our goal. Ideally, not higher than 120, but 140 is kind of our threshold because that's where glycation and inflammation and oxidative stress is happening in our body because of the glycation and its ability to create a free radical magnet where these little free radicals come in and chip away at your DNA and create accelerated aging process and inflammation. Not good. So our mesomorphs going to be somewhere in between. Carbohydrate can be somewhere between, now it's all based on activity, right? Somewhere between 20 to 40%, 20 to 40%. Our protein can be anywhere between 20 to 30%. A lot of it's gonna depend on how much exercise we're doing. And our fat can be anywhere between 30 to 40% as well. And these nutrients, these ratios here, these macronutrient ratios can be adjusted based on activity level. So can someone who is a mesomorph, like myself, can we do ketogenic? Absolutely. So what does a ketogenic ratio look like? Well, a ketogenic ratio, let's say we're, we're trying to adjust the dials, let's say we're a mesomorph and we wanna do keto because maybe we're being less active. The ratios I just gave you were for more active. But let's say I wanna be less active. Well, I can get my carbohydrate down to 10 I can get my protein right around maybe 15 to 20. And I can get my fat right around 70, 60 to 70%. And I can put that, basically I can dial those ratios in, these macronutrient ratio dials, imagine them being dials or levers, I can adjust that so now I'm gonna be burning more fat for fuel because this carbohydrate is so low. When our carbohydrates lower, it allows our insulin to be lower. When our insulin's lower, here's what happens. When insulin gets lower, all right, this is our little seesaw here, okay? When insulin's lower, what happens is glucagon tends to get higher, okay? And when glucagon gets higher, what also happens is free fatty acid synthesis, I should say free fatty acid metabolism, goes up. Okay, so we start burning more fat when insulin goes lower. And the reason why is insulin causes calories to go back into our cells. Okay, insulin causes salaries to go, calories to go back into our cells. So when insulin's lower, guess where those calories now go? They go to our mitochondria. They go to our mitochondria to get burned up for fuel. So really important, when insulin's low, glucagon goes high, we increase our energy utilization of free fatty acids, so now we're becoming a fat burner, right? So we can adjust our macronutrients according to how we wanna burn fat. Now our ectomorphs are probably gonna do better with higher carbohydrate. And they may even do better with carbohydrates spread out throughout the day or at least at lunch and dinner. Our mesomorph will probably do better with keeping our carbs at dinner time. And when we go to the endomorph here in a second, the endomorph's gonna do better if we have much carbohydrates outside of just a little bit of low sugar fruit or a little bit of safe starch. Even if we do that, we're gonna keep it all at dinner time for the endomorph. There's a great deal of research showing that carbohydrates eaten at dinner, when, when you keep your calories isocaloric, same amount of calories throughout the whole day, but we shift those carb calories to dinner, people that have them just at dinner versus spread out throughout the whole day actually lose more weight, lose BMI, right? That body mass index, even though the calorie levels are exactly the same. So our endomorph now, they have that, right, that hip to, ratio, hip to waist ratio that's more equal, that one to one, but everything's bigger. Big hips and also big waist versus the ectomorph, which is similar but smaller. So our endomorph is going to be able to put on a lot more fat. So we want to keep the carbohydrates closer to that keto level. So let's go back to that one more time. We're talking here right around 10% or so, maybe 20% depending on activity level. And again, I'm giving everyone ranges here because I want you to test it out and see how it feels for you. 
With our protein again, we may keep protein at 15 to 25%. We have to kind of dial that in because we can actually make a lot of sugar from protein. It's called gluconeogenesis. Gluco meaning glucose, neo meaning new, genesis meaning forming or creating. So we can make sugar out of protein. So we don't want to dial that protein up too much because we may increase our body, increase blood sugar too much. So we have to figure out where that is and how much that works. And then again, your fat's going to be right around that 60 to 70 percent range. And again, obviously, in case I haven't said it yet, I said it hundreds of times in previous videos and podcasts, our fats are going to be high quality, saturated fatty acids from coconut oil, grass-fed butter if you can handle it, or ghee. We can use good quality animal meats, palm oil, avocado oil, avocado, these are our monounsaturated, olive oil, that's a monounsaturated fat, I'm trying to keep the monos at low temperature, and then good clean fish as well and other healthy pasture pasture fed organic meats. So good clean meats, we want to be avoiding the refined vegetable oils here, the excessive omega-6 fatty acids because that will promote more inflammation. More inflammation will perpetuate obesity and larger uh, waist circumference. So ectomorphs, endomorphs, mesomorphs, the take home is typically with the ecto, carbohydrates gonna go up, protein and fat will go down. As you go to the meso, the dials for the carbohydrates start going down, protein and fat go up. And as you go into the endo, fat's gonna go dialed up much more. Protein will be somewhere in the middle and carbohydrate will be very low. And the more you're gonna be an endo, the more you wanna take any of your carbohydrates above and beyond vegetables, your non-starchies, any carbohydrates beyond that, that would be fruit and or safe starch, grain-free safe starch. You'd wanna do that at night only, only if you can tolerate that. So we went over a lot of stuff today watch this video twice, click on screen to subscribe so you can get more videos coming your way. And again, don't forget, if you have fatigue and or energy or mood or digestive issues and you fit into one of these body types, we gotta look deeper under the hood at the digestion, at the hormones, the thyroid, and the adrenals, because if we have one of those systems off, that could perpetuate any of these diet changes from working and benefiting you. So if you're having digestive issues and you're upping the fat and the protein as a ecto or endo or meso and you have more digestion issues, more than likely there's a gut infection and or an imbalance in your body's ability to break down and extract nutrients from your food. Click on screen, click below if you wanna reach out and get more information on fine tuning that. Again, this is Dr. J signing off. Have a great day.